greenhouse effect is actually a natural occurrence. It maintains Earth's average temperature at approximately 60 degrees Fahrenheit. However, human activities has caused global warming. Fossil fuels and CFCs, otherwise known as chlorofluorocarbons, cause heat to become trapped in Earth's atmosphere. This raises Earth's temperature as heat is unable to escape. Likewise, CFCs affect the ozone layer. Ozone in the stratosphere is a layer of the atmosphere 9 to 31 miles above the atmosphere. It serves as a protective shield, filtering out har harmful sun's rays, including a type of sunlight called ultraviolet B. CFCs are known, are broken down by the sun's ultraviolet rays, and chlorine atoms are released into the ozone layer. As chlorine breaks up in the ozone, holes are put into the ozone layer. It is important to know where CFCs come from. In the mid-1970s, scientists suggested that chlorofluorocarbons could destroy a stratospheric ozone. CFCs were widely used then as aerosol propellants in consumer products, such as hairsprays and deodorants, and for many uses in industry. With the destruction of the ozone layer allowing harmful UV rays in and heat being trapped, temperatures have risen. As the ocean covers much of the world, and water is effective at storing heat, an average temperature has risen. This is especially harmful for coral, which needs specific conditions. The result of all these changes has caused severe bleaching, which wiped out an estimated 19% of the world's coral reefs, with roughly three quarters of what remains being seriously threatened. What are the effects of the destruction of the ozone layer? With CFCs and other fossil fuels causing an increase of average temperature, the oceans are getting warmer. Ocean levels from 0 to 700 meters have had a huge increase in temperature. This is where almost all marine life lives. When ocean temperature reaches 32 degrees Celsius or greater for an extended period of time, coral lose their algae. The coral's white calcium carbonate skeleton is exposed. They appear bleached. Without the energy providing benefits of the algae, the coral die. Oceans, moreover, absorb about a third of the CO2 we d dump in the atmosphere, which indirectly causes the sea's pH balance to acidify. The change in ocean chemistry inhibits the formation of the calcium carbonate corals need to maintain in their shells and dissolves the stony skeletons that support corals and reefs. As a result, they are collapsing at a faster rate than rainforests. Caribbean reefs are in the worst shape, with 80% of the live coral cover lost since the 1970s due to heavy coastal development, hurricanes, overfishing, and climate change. The coral and algae present inside the host cells presented here are symbiotic. When UV rays due to holes in the ozone layer or heat, or heat caused by global warming damage the host cells photosystems, the algae known as zooxanthella are expelled. Once removed, the host cell is unable to survive by itself and the coral dies. Likewise, algae provides the color of the coral. Once removed, we see coral bleaching. Coral is made up of calcium, the same element that makes up your bones. With algae gone, the coral looks almost like a bone. Coral reefs support a third of marine life, providing food, habitat, and spawning grounds, which in turn feeds more than 500 million people. Many species of fish depend on coral reefs for food and shelter from predators but warming sea temperatures and increased ocean acidification from greenhouse gas emissions are damaging reefs worldwide. The loss of coral has endangered many other species that rely on the coral for a variety of needs. If not corrected, the biodiversity of fish will be unable to recover. Likewise, coral reefs provide a natural beauty. However, a dead reef is not a pretty reef. There are solutions to this situation. 
and a lot of them are already at work. Over time, stratospheric chlorine and bromine will combine with many other chemicals and eventually fall back to Earth. That's the point of ending production of CFC chemicals through the Clean Air Act. The Clean Air Act prohibits any use of ozone-depleting chemicals like CFCs. Scientists expect that with full compliance with the Clean Air Act, the ozone will heal by year 2050. As seen here, the holes in the ozone layer are being repaired. 300 Dobson units, which is the measure of the total ozone, is the normal amount. There hasn't been significant increase in restoration of the ozone layer since 2006. Studies have shown that certain species of coral do better than others in warm water. These species are elkhorn and staghorn coral species. These are fast growing and are a branching species. They provide crucial scaffolding to the reefs and habitats for hundreds of other marine creatures. Broken bits of the heat tolerant coral collected from the seafloor are incubated on the metal and rope moorings in protected areas. They grow like tree clippings until they're full, full enough to harvest, usually within a year or two. Pieces are then broken off as coral can reproduce like grafted plants and are transplanted into the wild. This ultimately forms hundreds of colonies of hardier corals on damaged areas of the reefs. There is a bright future for coral reefs. It is up to humanity to continue to take a stand to protect environments. With the step of many organizations and everyone's support, recovery is possible and proven to be effective.